what Matthew's done over the last about 10 minutes is set the context for how the law applies. That's very important context when you're thinking about compliance, understanding how the law applies, looking at exemptions. What comes after that is perhaps one of the more challenging aspects of the law. So what Matthew mentioned was that you the, the law depends on consent. Now, maybe to take a step back, the rule of thumb under the DPDPA is that every company must identify a ground or a legal basis which sets the context in which personal data is collected or processed. The primary legal basis for processing personal data under the DPDPA is consent. So in a nutshell, with a limited number of exemptions, you cannot collect personal data without consent. Now, for some more context, it's not the present Indian law does not require context. It's just that the thresholds for consent under present Indian law are incredibly low. I could log on to an e-commerce site and the e-commerce site throws a 20 page privacy notice at me that sets out all kinds of disclosures in respect of how they treat my personal data in legalese. I wouldn't read it, I wouldn't understand it, but I go ahead and accept it. That is valid consent for the purposes of existing Indian law. Where the law changes is that the standards for consent go up significantly. How consent is operationalized depends on a couple of key concepts. So the primary requirements for consent under the new law are that consent must be free, informed, specific, capable of being withdrawn. So effectively, what happens is there's an obligation on businesses to make sure that data principles understand how their data is being processed and how their data is being treated, have a legitimate and actual say in how their data is going to be processed, and have the ability to stop a company from using the data and not suffer unfair repercussions because of that. Simple example is if I was using a ride sharing app and the ride sharing app required me to keep my location data on after I leave the gap, that's not necessary to provide the services and you can't force a company to prove, you can't force an individual to actually consent to those requirements. But that aside, so consent is the primary ground for processing personal data. It changes a lot of things about how businesses will start interacting with users. Things like user journeys will have to, or user onboarding, the way apps are structured, the way disclosures are made, when you are physically collecting data that is later digitized, for example, in hospitals. How do you think about those consent journeys? It's got a lot more complex. In the absence of consent, the law does make a... It does offer a couple of exemptions. The problem is that the, there are very few obligations that private companies can rely on. So for example, in the absence of consent, as an employer, an employer can rely on a ground called processing for employment related purposes. What this effectively means is that you don't necessarily need an employee's consent to process the personal data as long as you're able to demonstrate that what you are doing with the data is in connection with employment related purposes. So for example, if you need bank account details to transfer salary, or you need certain health information to offer them health benefits or medical insurance, those may be valid grounds for which you don't need consent. For private companies, apart from processing in an employment related process, uh, in, a, in an employment related context. The law does and offers a slightly vague, ambiguous, but interesting ground for processing, which is you don't need consent if a user voluntarily provides their data. Provided that the user is providing the data for a specified purpose. Now, just to give you an example, if I call a restaurant to make a reservation, and the rest, and I provide them my name and phone number. This is voluntarily provided data. So the requirements for consent 
don't apply to the restaurant. They don't need to explain to me that, are you sure you want us, to, you want to give the data? Are you actually consenting to it? We are going to use it in XYZ purpose. So the voluntarily provided data is a very wide ground that could be a very useful basis for companies to actually collect data and use it. The only problem is that the language as is in the law seems a little too ambiguous. So what our suggestion at this stage would be is that if businesses are looking at the different data sets that they do collect and they are trying to identify the specific grounds on which such data is going to be collected once the law is in force, it becomes important to do two things. 